every child, every human being, every friend, every peer deserves to have at least one person in their lives who knows the color of their eyes. And that's the human connection that transcends trauma, helps people overcome, and instills a level of resiliency that's completely life-changing. I know everyone in this room has their own story. You have your your own experiences that you bring to the table every single day. So I'm hoping that our time together is just a reminder of, of how sometimes those interactions are so much deeper than you maybe ever could imagine. After spending almost a decade in foster care system, Ashley is the author of an international bestseller. She not only survived, but thrived, telling her story in her memoir, Three Little Words. Three Little Words is in development to become a major motion picture, and now Ashley has released her second book, which is called Three More Words. She's been featured on Montel Williams' Good Morning America, and most importantly, on the 99 cents Cool Ranch Dorito bags. She is dedicated to her nonprofit, the Foundation for Sustainable Families. Her story, education, and personal experience give Ashley a unique experience. Ashley was named International Woman of the Year and was one of Glamour Magazine's top 10 college women. Ashley has been featured on CNN, Good Morning America, The Today Show, and hundreds of other television, radio, print, and social media outlets. That passion for what you do is what's going to be that game changer. It's not enough to complain about something if you're not willing to be a part of the solution. Ashley is a tremendous inspiration. She has turned pain into power. There's always going to be that stumbling block, but it's what you do with those experiences. It's how you transcend them to help other people that ultimately make a tremendous impact. There are just countless individuals who have benefited from her story and her willingness to share it. Please warmly welcome Ashley Rhodes Quarter. Now, I know that a lot of your speakers probably get up here and say, I'm so excited to be here. Well, I legitimately am. And I need to put that in perspective for you. I have three children, three boys, ages one, two, and three. <laughs> the struggle is so, so real. And I know that many of you in this audience are also parents, because I also saw the majority of you at the hotel bar last night. Well, I have a little bit of an untraditional story, but I think it will really resonate with a lot of you. I spent almost 10 years in foster care. My mother was a teenager living in foster care herself when she got pregnant with me. And unfortunately, after she got into some troubles, as statistics would tell us, it was the cycle of abuse. So my brother and I ended up in foster care and she turned to the people who gave her food, shelter, housing, Unfortunately, those people were the drug dealers and the pimps and the people who didn't progress her life in a positive way. There is always a way to overcome even the most frustrating circumstances. I was able to find my outlet and my sanctuary in school. I used to say I acted out academically when I would go back into my foster homes and use bigger words than they understood. And I think everybody has a variety of coping mechanisms that they use to get through their daily lives, to get through their struggles. So you have to be able to recognize within yourself, what are you processing? What's affecting you the most? Do that internal inventory to really understand what you need to identify to make yourself more productive. Unfortunately, my mom was never given that guidance. She didn't have anyone to steer her in the right direction. So my brother and I spent over a decade in foster care. I had 14 different foster homes, and I later learned that almost 25% of them were or became convicted felons. <laughs> Whoopsie tootsies. That's what I would call an operational oversight. I know some of you are like, God, Ashley, way to bring it down. There's a saying that you can never hate someone if you know their story. So even with all of the people in my life that have wronged me, 
It's been so interesting to understand their stories and their backgrounds and why they're bringing that particular attitude to the table. And sometimes inspiration and that life turning moment comes when you least expect it. It comes in a really scary package. It comes when you didn't even think that you were ready for it. I was really curious who could have made the biggest difference in my life. So I went through and I started counting all of the supervisors, all of the signatures, all of the different professionals that interacted with my case. And ultimately, it was something like 54 caseworkers, 23 attorneys, 17 psychologists, psychiatrists and therapists, five guardian ad litem staff, four judges, four court personnel, three abuse registry workers, two primary caseworkers, and then ultimately, this volunteer. So in the end, this one woman, who was the only person not paid to take care of me, was the only one who believed me when I said I was being abused. She got me out of those abusive situations and ultimately found me the adoptive family that transformed my life. That is the power of one person. I think what's really poignant about all of this is that you may not realize that you're a social worker. You actually have tremendous people skills, social work skills, and these are things that you use in your lives every day. But I'm hoping that my story can really be a reminder of how you are inspiring people to do better, how you are coping with the changes in your professional life and your personal life, and how that translates to the people that you work with, how it inspires your coworkers, how it hopefully motivates you to become a more productive member of society and the workplace. If you're able to really recognize and appreciate that you have an opportunity to make a tremendous difference for at least one person, that's huge. I wanna thank you for everything that you have done, are doing, but most importantly, what you will be doing.